Good morning. This is week six, day two, 2024. Let us pray. God, we thank you for salvation. We thank you that as a result of that salvation, you then call us into a relationship with yourself. And you don't leave us guessing and wondering what we are to do, how we are to respond to this great work that you have done for us. You spell it out very clearly for us in your word. And so we pray that you would help us to look to that word, uh, to seek after it, to hear from you, and to respond. And we ask that you would be at work through your Holy Spirit as we seek to do these things. In Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen. This is Exodus chapter 19, as Israel is there at Mount Sinai. God speaks to Moses and says, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob and the people of Israel, You saw what I did, how I bore you out on eagles' wings, how I delivered you. Now, therefore, notice this whole concept of deliverance comes before God gives them any kind of instructions. There is grace, in other words, before there is an expectation of a change in their behavior, of uh, instructions on how they are to be engaging with God. Obey my word, keep my covenant, and you'll be my people. For all the earth is mine, and you shall be to me a special group of people, a kingdom of priests, and a holy nation. Go and speak that to the people. And Moses does, and the people say, all that the Lord has spoken, we will do. And so there is a response on their part. There is a commitment to respond and obey and follow what God has to say. And then the Lord says, be prepared. I am coming that you might hear me speak and that you may also believe. It is no small thing to come before God. This is something that we, I think at different times in our lives, fail to recognize, uh, fail to understand. Uh, We show up for church on Sunday mornings, and we don't pause to think about who God is, what we're about to do, whose presence we're coming into. It can be very easy to fall into patterns and motions and just kind of going through everything without pausing to think about what it means to seek to come into the very presence of God himself. This text reminds us that it is a big deal. There is such a thing as preparation for worship. And Israel is very much instructed here to be ready to come before God. And this is something that we ought to seek to make a regular practice in our own lives. Whether it be a Saturday night where you are doing some of the physical prep work, if you have clothes that you have to iron, or if you have a dress to pick out, or you've got a tie to pick out, that you get all that stuff done and squared away Saturday night. If you're planning uh, some sort of a a breakfast, well, maybe you can find something that would be nice and easy to prepare Saturday night and then throw into the oven on Sunday morning so that your morning, from the time you wake up to the time you go to church, is not a time where you feel rushed. It's not a time where Things are causing you to to feel anxiety and to be hectic. As much as you can, take all of the stuff that might cause you to feel that way on a Sunday morning and move it to Saturday night. And then allow yourself on Sunday morning to be thinking prayerfully about what we are about to do. Asking that God would be at work in our midst. Asking Uh, that he would speak to you by his Holy Spirit, asking that he would open the scriptures to you, asking that the words you speak, the songs that we sing, the prayers that we offer, would indeed be something that God desires, that it would be something that is pleasing in his sight and not self-centered, 
not something that we do merely for our own edification or to look good in front of others, to, uh, to show somebody our, our Sunday best clothes, and that's our own, only motivation for showing up. There is very much this whole notion, Exodus 19, about getting ready for worship. And then when you reach Exodus 20, this is a, you know, a sort of a worship experience. God then speaks. And again, notice his emphasis on grace first. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. I have acted on your behalf first. Now I am saying to you, this is how you respond to me. This is how you approach me. This is how you engage with me as I have redeemed you. And he goes into the the list of, you know, the ten words or the ten commandments that we probably memorized as kids if you grew up in the church. The first four uh, tend to deal with God and the rest tend to deal with our relationship to man. Don't think that it's okay to have any kind of idols in your life. That's a pretty straightforward commandment, and yet, in some ways, it is something we can struggle with. There are things in our lives that we allow to be more important than God. There are things that we pursue more than we pursue God, Uh, things that if we think we did not have them, that, well, life would lose its purpose. It would lose its meaning. There would be no point in, in continuing on. Anything in our life that makes us feel that way is an idol. And this is why we see that even good things can become idols in our lives. There's a whole section in here about carved images, physical idols, worshiping them. There is the notion of keeping the name of our God holy. There is the notion of the Sabbath day, having a day set aside for rest from what we normally do over the course of our lives and emphasizing worship on that day, a pattern that is not just beneficial spiritually for us, but studies have shown that a day of rest is actually better for us physically too. And so these things are meant for our good. Uh, They're meant for our flourishing. Likewise, when you get to these commandments about our relationships with one another, these are things that are meant to make civilization our relationships with one another, our cultures, communities, families, however you want to look at it, to make them better. If, if there was murder everywhere, it would, you would not never feel safe. If you couldn't trust in the solidarity and the faithfulness of a family, then you would have no sense of security, of commitment, of community, of, of, of being connected and feeling a part of something. And so we find that God's word and the way that he structures things, the instructions that he gives us, are for our benefits. And so I think an easy way to respond to a text like this is to be thinking ahead for this coming weekend. Think ahead on how you can be preparing for worship. Think ahead of the steps you can take to try and Make your Sundays, perhaps, uh, your Sunday mornings in particular, a bit different than maybe they've been in the past. And we'll close as we pray and ask God to help us do just that. God, we do ask that as we uh, think ahead, as we look ahead to what you would have us do, as we gather in worship, a, a right thing for us to do, to not neglect Uh, doing that work together. We pray that you would make it a joy for us and not a burden. And we pray that you would give us a desire to look forward to it and that you would help us to set aside time uh, to prepare 
and to think about what it means to come before you. We ask it all in Christ our Lord. Amen.